Huh? You know, maybe romance anime isn't so bad after all. Sure, there are some questionable things here and there and maybe once in a while. You even ask yourself, why the hell am I watching a show where the characters are just living? They go to school, talk, go home, and sleep. I just can't understand why you want a parasocial relationship with the characters on screen. Rather, then just go hang out with your friends. In the end, you're just gonna cry at episode 12, in your room, alone, and it's dark. Not that I've cried before. Yeah, I'm definitely not projecting anything. Are you looking at me like that? But I do acknowledge that there are interesting stories that are told through romance which can only be replicated on a grand scale by using anime as a medium. But man, I've been watching this anime. Now please get out of my room. But why? You pop a boner on me? I might have misjudged my opinion. Look, I don't condone being a pervert and dating your own goddamn sister who's related to you by blood, but can we at least enjoy it in a fictional world? Wow, that just came out of my mouth. Hey, but at least you enjoy it, right? You know, for the... <coughs> The plot! The story starts off with a certain girl going to school. Everyone fawns over her, and she gives off a unique aura. And to be this simply, she's a one-of-a-kind beauty. Suddenly, someone came up to her, took onto his feet, he got shut down. This is why she's known as the Ice Princess. Because every guy that tries to even get close to her will have their dignity scraped away from them. At this point, you might have a higher chance of winning the lottery than getting her to like you. Despite that, there is one person she's strangely close with, and that's... <sighs> she gives him more attention, but in an aggressive way. This is what you call a sundere. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you treat them nicely, but they instead destroy your entire... I know, right? It's hot. And the best thing about her is that she hides her feelings in Russian. I know, hot. I can't stop watching this anime. I love everything about it. At this rate, I'm actually gonna buy a body pillow. Especially the opening because, man, it really has been taught through well. From the music use, to the choreography, to the choreography, and the studio has really outdone themselves this time. Because every new episode, there's a new ending. The only other anime that I can think of that has done the exact same thing is Chainsaw Man. I didn't expect the studio to go this hard, and it's a romance anime out of everything they could have chosen. There is also one more obvious thing that the studio has really outdone themselves this time, and that is becoming a complete degenerate. Echi is a genre that is more common than you think in the anime community. One moment they're fighting, and the next? She did what with her brother? And they're related by blood? So no matter what genre, anime claims to be, there's a good chance, depending on the studio adapting the manga, there's gonna be some sassy baka moments. You're so excited to see Fire Force. Oh my god, the animation is insane. And not to mention the sound effects. They're like music to my ears. It really scratches the right part of my brain. But then, suddenly, was this? Out of freaking nowhere, this girl just doesn't have her clothes on. They just... <laughs> magically disappeared. Good heavens, what happened to her? Just shut up. Dude, like, what the hell? Especially when it comes to romance. There's a ton of them. If I do one push-up for every loot scene, I might as well be a fitness YouTuber. Screw anime. I'm David fucking Goggins. This show is definitely not safe to watch in public. There's this one scene where he helps her put her sock up, and I don't know why, but why they gotta make it so Actual. Hey, yo! Why does this scene have to be so stimulating? And it's not just this scene. There are a couple of them which made me think to myself, is this gonna be one of those anime where it claims to be quote-unquote an anime? And then it suddenly pulls out a Yosuganosora. I swear to god, every time I grab my food and try to eat, they immediately show something sexual. Like, child man! Reading any description of the anime does not help in any way at all. Oh, this anime is about a Russian girl. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Oh, he has a sister? I think bad can possibly happen. Yep, it's in there now. Good. Now keep it there and slowly press. Uh, don't rush, silly. That's perfect. It might be even better if you went in a teensy bit deeper. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's obvious by now that, yeah, this anime has a lot of fan service. But that's not the main reason of why I'm so glued to the screen during my binge watch is because the characters themselves are so cliche, but in such a good way that it helps elevate the character's personality more. I love when she gets angry in Russian. I love it when they're talking normally just in class. Even though it's so basic, so bland, 
so uninteresting, but man, I just can't stop watching it. I think now I know why people watch hundreds of slice of life anime, because it gives you an experience that you can rarely get in real life. Guse being the main character of this anime is actually really likable for me. He's not dumb, it's actually the complete opposite. So he's basically like Ayano Koji from Classroom of the Elite, but he's actually nice for once. There's a reason why Alia really likes hanging out with Kusei, and it's because he was the one who showed her that life isn't so bad after all. Despite him appearing nonchalant or sometimes rude around Alia, he actually cares for her. Oh, hi, you, my Oni-chan. Get off me. Did you just tell your sister to help you get off? Hear me out. I'm gonna be so... I'm gonna be honest, okay? So hear me out. I really like the sister. For wholesome reasons. I never thought the day where I would prefer the sister even more than the heroine of the story. And of course, she likes her brother. It's practically a requirement at this point. The amount of romance anime that has a sister with a brother complex is insane. Like, do the authors really want to smash their own sister? Jesus Christ, man. The reason why I'm reacting like this it's not because she likes her own brother, it's because I actually enjoy watching them together. It's only good when siblings are related by blood. Like, I can't support the weird relationship, but god damn, it's so interesting. I'm like, yeah, I do kind of ship those two, since they create an interesting dynamic. But once I go to find out that they're actually related, I'm like, hold up, why do you do this to me? Why does the author have to always make the most interesting female character his own sister. Yuki is basically a hairy adult man stuck in a girl's body. And not to mention, the English dub of this anime. Oh my god. What is happening right now? Time and time again, the anime really wants me to ship those siblings. But I won't give in. Unless they're not related by blood. I mean, dating siblings is bad. Really bad. Why do they have to make them related? I can't even, like, got open my eyes. Oh, I'm having an Asian moment right now. When I say Yuki likes her brother, I mean she really likes her brother. He wakes up early in the morning to be greeted by his sister on bed. She even jokes about if he got a goddamn boner from her own sister. Then another time, she ambushed him from under his bed. When Kuse and Alia went on a date, she's anguished by the fact that she got cucked by Alia. Nah, I pray that the author doesn't have a sister. Please don't tell me he has a sister. The funny part, that Yuki is Kuze's younger sister. Because for some reason, they just don't tell people. At this rate, you guys might as well have se- <laughs> Despite the carefree nature and joyful behavior of the characters in this anime, there's actually more depth to the characters. The reason why Alia is hard to approach is because of her past that makes her think that people in this world don't care about your feelings. When she was doing a project in middle school, she got livid that the other members won't give as much effort as she is. Sure, it's not the most traumatic thing to happen in her life, and it's childish of her to have that way of thinking for the remainder of her life ahead. However, I still can acknowledge her feelings of desperation and struggle to do her best and fit into society. Not only her, the reason why Kuze doesn't give it his all is because he felt bad about his actions in the past. He crushed other people's dream, and even his sister. During her childhood, she spent most of her time bedridden due to her illness, and to make it worse, they're fatherless. Therefore, Kuze was the only one to look after her. That's exactly why she's so obsessed over her own brother. It's because he's the most important person to her in the whole world. Deep down, I think that Yuki is aware that liking her own brother is weird as hell. But I don't think Yuki, like, actually wants to marry her own brother or anything like that. She just wants to be as close to him as possible before he has his own life. There's only so much time in the world, so her actions are somewhat justified. Despite me questioning the awkwardness of their relationship, I can kind of turn off a blind eye now since I feel happy for- Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna cry. Overall, I think the anime is really adapted well in terms of conveying the unique chemistry between the characters. And one more thing, please don't date your sister.